right, so we are finally back with another video for the first time in hey, God, knows, <laughs> God knows how long. So we have a car that we were trying to review for a long time now. It is a 2013 Jaguar XJL portfolio. It's the V6 supercharged all-wheel drive version. 340 horsepower, 332 foot-pounds of torque, paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission. Go to 60 and I think five seconds flat. Um, Not bad for a big boat. Yeah, wasn't bad. Dylan drove it uh, finally on the way here. Uh, we're gonna talk primarily today, just give you a walkthrough of the car before we get into everything. Most of the shots we're gonna do and talking points will be taken from the very quiet and luxurious inside of the car while we're driving. We're gonna focus primarily on the what the owner paid for this car five years ago with the amount of mileage they bought it with and what they're selling it for now with the mileage it has on we're going to primarily talk about depreciation on it which is astronomically high on this car i mean probably the worst i've, I've ever seen yeah like most luxury vehicles are but this car just takes it to a whole other level so we're going to get into that get into the driving tell you what we do and don't like this car is also fully optioned for the most part. There isn't a single option I don't think it has. I think the sticker price is 93000 It starts this model at eighty two. I think it was specced up to about ninety three and 94000 It's the XJL portfolio. So it's the longer wheel, wheelbase XJ and it, the portfolio package comes with additional tech. So we're going to get into everything. I'm going to show the interior off before we get going. So it's very dirty. It's probably the dirtiest Jaguar review somebody's done. But <laughs> you could see it has, you know, the wood grain. This one has the Meridian Sound 21 speaker, I believe, sound package. Everything in it is just beautifully done. I mean, the way the leather is wrapped, it's just gorgeous. Uh, the, the back seats have some of the craziest leg room out of almost anything I've ever been in. I mean, yeah, just fully and I'm six foot. Yeah. I was just driving the car yeah. in a comfortable position. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. That's the interior, and then we're gonna move on to driving it and getting into why we're reviewing this car. So I was wrong on the mileage. I think I said it had a hundred K. I didn't realize that it has a hundred eighteen thousand on it now. One thing I like a lot that I just noticed, I have spent a lot of time with this car. I know the owner well. I've driven it a few times and never in depth like right now. But the trip button here controls this stuff. So I kind of like that. It's pretty cool. Something that Dylan just found out by mistake. You just oh. have to... Yep. <laughs> it just pops open. It scared the crap out of him because he did it by mistake. But there's a lot of weird quirks in this interior to pull a Doug DeMuro. Well, well the this, quirks and features. This right here is something that I freaking love. Mm -hmm. And Jaguar has always done this. And I'm so happy to still see it here in their newer cars. Yeah, it's very the, nice. Like the classic, you know, analog type of clock in the interior. I love that. Yeah. The only... It's very classy. Yeah, it is. The only two dislikes I have on this entire car are with the interior is I, I hate these, a lot of cars do it now. I hate the twist gear knobs. And the, the this just seems bulky to me. That's just me. The, these two vents just seem bulky to me. They are, but they look great. Yeah, the, the, the car does look great. Those are the only things that I that, that kind of bother me. Starting to hear some things going here and there. <laughs> uh, the suspension has a little bit of a rattle. So to start off the video, um, the basis of it, like we said, is depreciation. So this car was purchased with 30,000 miles on it for $35,000 when it was, I believe, five years old. So 92 grand. That means it depreciates an average of $11,000 a year. So right now it's at 118,000 miles. The owner is expecting, he just bought a new car. He's asking i believe 13.5 and expecting to get somewhere between 12 and 13 for it so it's just insane the depreciation of these cars it's like the the worst kept secret i guess um that these cars are an insane value with the amount of car you get for such a little price 
back, I, I remember Doug DeMuro did a video on this car when it was like a few years ago, when it was around that $30,000 budget. And it was like, you could get a $90,000 car for the price of like a new CRV. That was like his talking point. Now you could get a $90,000 car for the price of a used Civic. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's like, it's crazy. Like my Accord, with almost the same mileage is worth the same as this car. Yeah. And it's 10 years older than this car. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it, it's pretty crazy. The thing with this car that really got me is that obviously Jaguars were always known for their beautiful cars, they're great, but they've always been known for being crazy unreliable. What got me with this particular car is the owner has had it for five years now, taken it, I, I think, 70 80 thousand miles they put on it and they've had almost no issues with this car up to date they have a full warranty on it bumper to bumper if they were to have issues a lot of things would get taken care of but for somebody to go out and think that they could still afford this car and i mean when i say afford i don't mean you know all right they want 13 grand here you go i just bought a jaguar it costs $1,400 or more to put tires on this car. Brakes are crazy expensive. Suspension work is crazy expensive. I think the cats were about six grand, seven grand. They just did them. I mean, it's just a different world of car. And I just want to point that out because what do we like to do on the channel? We always recommend cars for people. Yeah. And we're never going to be like trying to give the wrong impression here. Yeah, you. Can, this isn't a car you can. Re this isn't a car you can recommend to to anybody because you know, like Nick said, just the cost of maintenance. I mean, but that's just classic. You know, anybody that's in the car scene, we all know that guy who got the good deal on the BMW. Check out my sweet M3. Blah 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 blah. And then, uh, where's the car? Oh yeah, I couldn't afford putting brakes on it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just, I couldn't afford yeah. getting tires put on the car. Yeah, and that is this exact situation to to a t you know yeah it's just something that people overlook uh, a lot of the time yeah like yes you can pick this car up it's running and driving great it's been reliable its whole life so far for this owner but i mean you're getting up on 120,000. have fun trying to maintain things have fun trying to put tires on it but besides that it's been a great car some things uh i like about the driving aspect of it it's a 4100 pound sedan that is very long and this car has no body roll virtually for a car of its size it's very responsive turning in it has some nice power to it it's nothing really crazy uh, but it definitely moves out of its own way it has a nice whooshing sound that you get at the higher rpms from the supercharger definitely gets the job done i don't know what did you like about that? yeah so i drove it <clears throat> just before for the first time i've never driven one of these cars i enjoyed it i mean you, you know it's a jaguar you can't what are you going to complain about the thing rides like you're on a pillow but what surprised me was you know like nick said there's no body roll which a lot of the times when you, you know, go f for straight comfort, you sacrifice handling. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem like the handling was sacrificed too much with this car. Yeah, there's a um, very uh, in-depth suspension. Well, I was going to say that's exactly why the suspension, which, you know, with this kind of mileage, it's about time to change the suspension. And that's another very expensive thing to do with this car. Yeah. You know, where somebody's going to buy it. Yeah, it's a great deal, 12000 I could get it for. But then, you know, in a few months, you're putting suspension on it. Yeah. And that's running you close to two grand. I mean, just yeah. in parts. Oh, yeah. And there was, of course, talking typical Jaguar stuff, there were some issues with this car. Uh, not this one specifically, but this year and the 2014 year, there were some recalls. One was the fuel filter O-ring housing was leaking. And the other was a suspension issue where the rear tow link would separate from the subframe. That's so, great. So that, yeah, so that's a pretty, pretty big issue. Uh, but they're recall, so they will be taken care of. But this one didn't have anything. So getting into the power, just kind of rolling on and then adding it. Now I'm in sport mode. <laughs> it definitely does the job. It plants you in the seat nice. You know, we just did a 30 to 80 roll, nothing wild. Uh, but you don't, you know, the, the weirdest part is you don't feel like you're at 80 yet. Yeah, that's... So 
smooth. That's the most that's the most dangerous part. I mean, this is a super safe, super luxurious car, but the danger comes with just how comfy it is. Because even me, I was going down some back roads before, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm doing 45, 50 miles an hour. In like a 20. Yeah, and I'm like, holy, roads. you know, you you just don't feel it. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, it's it's definitely nothing wild, but it's it's enough to have some fun with when you want to. But uh, one thing I mentioned to Dylan that I didn't really like initially was that the lower, really lower first, second gear uh, for comfort. And I guess, you know, he was saying they do it for comfort, but the, the responsiveness, low, very low, slow rolling speed. Yeah, pulling it, out of a street, turning yeah, onto an intersection. I just, it's not like, it's almost like the pedal's not even there. It's just dead for a little while. Yeah, there's it's definitely a dead feeling pedal at the lower speeds. But like I was saying to Nick too, that's just mainly for comfort. I mean, you know, you don't want a snappy throttle in a car where, you know, you've got these luxurious seats in the back. You have, you know, yeah. these nice uh, mirrors that pop down. So you're, you know, people in the back can get their makeup done and everything while, while you're cruising yeah. comfortably. Yeah, they don't want you snapping people's necks. <laughs> yeah. And I, like I said, I've spent time in this car driving it and, and way more time as a passenger in that back seat. And you're just, you're falling asleep out there. Like, I, I don't care where you're going. If it's a, over a 30 minute drive, you're just gonna fall asleep. And that's, you know, the whole point of it really. Um, yeah, the only other thing I, I guess is just going more into the interior and then we'll kind of wrap it up, is you kind of really need to get used to the way it's laid out. Because before I picked up the car and I had no, uh, the AC was on and I'm like trying to shut it using these like a normal car. And I'm like, oh shit, it says climb it and I click it and then it says climb it off. And I'm just not paying attention to shit like that because <laughs> it's just different, you know? Yeah, that's a, a lot of newer cars are doing that too where, uh, yeah, you are you're, you have to go through the touch screen to access certain things that, you know, you're used to being able to just hit a button here, turn it on, turn it off. Yeah. Uh, my mom's got a newer charge. It's the same way. Yeah. And yeah, like Nick said, it just, you know, it takes a little getting used to yeah, uh, the layout. The washer fluid being this button. I was going like this, like pulling it back like usual. And it's doing nothing, but it's this button is the washer fluid. So it's a little weird quirks like that, but. Um, yeah, which that you're, you always find that in, in these uh, British cars. Yeah. But, uh, you know, these vents are cool. Nick was saying they're kind of big. I mean, they are bulky, but they're, I love the design. Yeah. And it's the way that the angles. Them any, anyway. And then, yeah, this is shutting and not, you know, closing the vent itself. You turn this. I mean, I, it's, it's neat to me. It's neat. Yeah. And I'm usually not a fan of chrome trim on any car that was made past, like, the 1980s. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the chrome in here is nice. And the chrome on the outside that you saw in the beginning of the video, it's not, like, regular. It looks more like brushed aluminum. Yeah, it's not, like, flashy. Yeah, it's not like this face. chrome. Yeah, exactly. I like that. It's, it's a little down. more subtle. For what it is, it's such a great car for the price. It's just, you know, as far as recommending it, it's not something I feel like we can do. Yeah, I it's, can't recommend it. Yeah, it's yeah. more of a car that, like, if you know what you're getting into, then you know what you're getting into. Yeah, and like, if, I, exactly. And, and I hate to be this guy, and I've never done this in any other video we've done, but it applies here. If, if you're not in a certain tax bracket, you just shouldn't own it. Yeah. Because when tires come around, like this isn't a, oh, I got to wait till next paycheck to get my tires type of car. Like mm -hmm. you just shouldn't be doing that to drive a, a car. You yeah. Know, this is a daily driver. It's not meant to be a sports car or a weekend car. Like if you can't afford it, then just don't buy it. And that's why for me, like, you know, if you're in that realm of, of, of wealth and you can take care of yourself and things before your vehicle and all that, whatever, go for it. But for like most people who watch our videos and stuff like that, I, Nah, I, I'm not going to recommend that, you know? Yeah. It's just not the way, it's not what I'm going to do. I'm not going to recommend any car that costs that much to do like a simple routine procedure on. Yeah, people, you know, speaking of the tires, people don't realize that when they're getting a car like this, oh, it's all-wheel drive, it's going to be great in all weather. No. This that's, car sucks in yeah, the snow. That's not it the sucks. case. And it's the same, it's like my, Vol my Volkswagen mm -hmm. um, that'll be on the channel eventually with a review. The wide tires they're just not doing you anything in the, in the snow. I don't care if, you know, you have the best all-wheel drive system in the world. This thing's got like 275s on it. Mm -hmm. Super wide tires. Yeah. So, and it's a boat. You know, it's a big car. It's a 41, you said, what did you say? 4100 yeah, 4, pound car. 
it's just not going to perform in the snow the way that you would you know hope hope that it would with being all-wheel drive yeah yeah that's that's about it for this video i don't recommend you get this car <laughs> even though it's a solid excuse me even though it's a solid deal just probably stay away um and that's really for me <laughs> yeah i'm gonna have to agree i'm gonna have to agree uh with nick on that one yeah but, you know, still a cool car. I'm happy we got to review it. You know, hey, I mean, this would be like a really good car for somebody who's mechanically inclined and has about, you know, twenty to $30,000 worth of to uh, tools sitting in their garage and a place to pull this thing in and, and do what they got to do. But, you know, like we were saying with the suspension, it's just the parts. Like, yeah. like you know, the parts alone, if you're going to go ahead and try to do something yourself, that, you know, it's still expensive. It's yeah. still not, it's, you know, it's not like I'm going to go do suspension on my Honda Civic myself and save a bunch of money. Like, nah, you're still spending a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, that's about All it. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. We got a couple reviews coming soon. Till then, thanks. Peace.